Hi, everybody. Oh, my gosh. We're live. This is so exciting. Welcome to the women's game, everybody. This is Do It Live, where we are going to, right now, live react to the U.S. Women's National Team winning 2-1 to one against Japan as part of the She Believes Cup. I am so happy to have my friend, Roger Bennett, here with me to talk about this game. Rog, we so, match. We do. Look at this. Who wore it best? Who wore it best? You guys, we did not plan this. I know. That's what's so amazing. We didn't plan it. This is like the worst remake of Twins ever. Sam, you, <laughs> you, somehow we're both wearing the same thing. Complete coincidence because we genuinely just clicked on. Sam looks fantastic and I look terrible. It's genuinely, it's very humbling. Uh, yeah, humbling for me, Raj. I can't believe we're matching. I'm so excited that the US won. Um, what a huge game. Two to one. Jeez, what did you think of the game? Well, it was bit, I mean, let's start at the beginning today. Everton won, which I didn't think I'd see again in Congrats. my lifetime. Tracy Chapman's fast car came out 36 years ago today. And it's year nine of the She Believes Cup, a tradition unlike any other. And our smells like teen spirit, US Women's National Team, just beat Japan 2-1, as you said, Sam. Which means, Sam, our greatest dream in life, which is, of course, we share, it's of Sonic. And I'll listen there, having a She Believes seven P. It's still on. I don't know if it like wh who else has ever had a seven P. Like who has won seven titles of the same tournament? I want a list because the list is going to just be two people long. I know. By the way, can I just tell you? It makes a mockery of of sporting truths. You know, we talk about who's the greatest. Is it Pele? Is it Maradona? Is it Lionel Messi? And I'm like bollocks to all of that. It's got to be Sonnet in there. Tell me another athlete that's won. I mean, Messi uh, never won it once. Let alone seven times. Yeah. Well, we, do, I don't want to jinx their seven Pete. They will have to win on Tuesday <sighs> to have that seven Pete, she believes, cup for Sauna and Alyssa Nair. But first things first, we need to break down this game. That's what we're here to do. We are live just moments after the final whistle, reacting in real time to what we all just watched. And we are also going to be taking your questions. We're right here live on YouTube. All you have to do to call in with a question is scan the QR code in the top left of your screen or click the pinned comment in the chat. That's going to take you into a Zoom with our fearless producer, JW, who can tell you everything you need to know. Don't worry, you're not going to appear on screen. So if you're not ready, you're not dressed, you have your glasses on, if whatever. You, if you don't have one of these sweatshirts on. It's okay. You don't need We're to appear okay on it. screen. It's audio only. And for those of you who don't want to call in and ask a question, do us a huge favor and give us a like. It helps a lot more than you know. So first things first, Raj. The US Women's National Team won this game. Two to one. Emotionally. Whew. Big deep breath, I feel. I am so excited. I think we played really well. What's your like big emotional takeaway from this game? How do you feel when it ended? I felt a massive amount of relief um, for these footballers. I mean, we're still, ultimately, we are living this game between two points, which is um, the darkness, uh, the end of the World Cup, an end that came too soon, a shocking end, um, a painful end, a traumatic end, and the, the, the ray of light that we hope is the Olympics. And so everything is kind of evaluated, almost walking on a higher wire um, between those two things. And with every step this US team takes um, through the W Gold Cup, uh, where there was that, another traumatic moment of deep uh, mortality, the loss uh, to Mexico, uh, the win against a deeply physical Colombia, the, the ridiculosity of, the, um, of the, the game in the rain against Canada, which proved nothing to anyone. Uh, and then the Brazil game, which we won, and silverware. But you were there. Brazil were bloody good in this game. Uh, I mean, we'll relive the beats of this game. But yeah. this was the best U.S. women's national team collective performance I've seen. And I am giddy in the wake of it. I know. Same. I think despite, we're going to get to all of this in detail, but despite going down early, literally immediately, uh, off of a Japan goal, they went up one to nothing in like the first 30 seconds of the game. I think our pressure defensively, we kept winning the ball back high up in Japan's end. Uh, and that exact thing is what resulted in Jaden Shaw being able to score a goal to tie it up. Sam Coffey kind of stepped up out of the midfield, won the ball back, uh, slotted it inside to Jaden Shaw. Beautiful finish from Jaden Shaw. And then we just kept that pressure up. And in the second half, Sophia Smith earned a PK by trying to take on a couple of players at the corner of the box. 
Lindsay Horan obviously finishes the PK. We end up winning two to one. And now we are where we want to be in the She Believes Cup final on Tuesday. Where else would we want to be than in the, the, the final of the She Believes Cup? So, I know. I big? know. You're totally right. I'm, I'm really excited. I think this was a lot of growth, like you said, from Gold Cup. Um, and we are going to find out who we're playing on Tuesday. That other game is about to start in a few minutes. Canada versus Brazil will play the winner of that game for the She Believes Cup championship on the line on Tuesday. Let's get into the details of this game, though, Raj. Let's start from the beginning. Well, let's say this tournament is its quite oddly named. I've got to acknowledge. I always feel like the need to acknowledge that before uh, kickoff. She believes. I've got to believe that we can actually do better. I do love GFOP at Sanar 222's suggestion that it should be called She Knows, which I think is genuinely um, I'd like to actually <laughs> change. The, I'd like to go myself with engraving tools and just carve that into the side of the trophy. Um, but we knew going in, as I said, Tom, this was going to be some test for this game. All four participants in this tournament are ranked in the top 10 in the world rankings. The US, we have to acknowledge these rankings mean everything and nothing. They're currently number four, our lowest ever ranking in history. Um, so there's lots to prove in this game. And we know uh, that Japan are a bloody good team. We re we have to remember, I mean, before they were shocked themselves in the World Cup, they beat Spain 4-0. Uh, they can obliterate um, opponents. And this was going to be a formidable tactical test for the United States. And then we saw the team sheet. This is a US team in transition. Um, I think they only had 10 players on its squad from last year's She Knows Cup uh, from that <laughs> roster. Um, so how deeply emotional was it when we saw the team sheet and saw the name Mal Swanson, who oh. ruptured a patella almost exactly a year ago, April 8th, three surgeries later, back in this lineup in Atlanta, the town she considers home. And you just interviewed uh, Mal yeah. for friendlies, watching her take the field. What do you think was going on in her mind in this beautiful moment? Yeah. I mean, for me, seeing her in the lineup, it was emotional. I'm, I'm so happy for Mal. I think that... Coming off of, she was out not playing with the U.S. Women's National Team for almost a year. She has been back training with Chicago for a while now. She just played 90 minutes. She just scored her first goal back, which is incredible. But so I think sometimes there's this thought, like, it's going to take players months and months to get back to their former selves. And Mal is just so ready for this. I, I, I heard a little bit before the game that Mal has said she doesn't have any of that, like, kind of mental anxiety around that injury. She trusts her knee. She feels good about it. And I think for Mal to come into this game with the confidence that she's gained in the NBSL in the last couple of weeks, she just seems unfazed by the fact that she was injured, the fact that she was out. Even as she came on friendlies, she kind of nonchalantly talked us through what was, it sounded extremely traumatic, life-threatening, dangerous. She had this infection in her knee after her surgery to repair that patella. And I just, seeing her back... I know we're going to get to this seeing her play so well today. I can't believe the mental strength and the energy that she brought. I just think that Mal is rearing and ready to go. And she showed that all game. Oh, Snidely in the chat says should be called the women's game cup. Sam, are we ready to sponsor major global tournaments? Ready I to think, go. I think I'm ready to go. I think we're ready. Get on it. <laughs> US soccer. Um, by the way, I agree with you about Mal. I mean, shoot to shoot. She would just seem locked in um, yeah. today. No trepidation, fearless, just like, oh, and I loved it. Um, i got to say, when I see these starting lineups, I do wonder, um, Emma Hayes not arriving till May, but how much are Emma Hayes fingerprints all over that selection? Um, also, the same with the tactics, uh, because from kickoff, I was like, oh my God, maybe we don't need Emma Hayes. We might need Dawn Staley, because right from kickoff, <laughs> Japan let the United States onto them. I was like shouting at my television. I was like, it's a trap. Um, <laughs> because the first time we coughed up possession, they just sprung the transition. Word down the right flank. Uh, Genoite swung a still up high. Uh, and Kiko Swaiki charged in on goal from a sharp angle. So precise. Lashed the ball low, true, off the post. 30 bloody seconds in. By the way, same time the US men conceded against Jamaica. Burhalter and Emma Hayes just need to they just need to do trainings about the 30th second. 30th <laughs> second yours. It was gobsmacking. Earliest goal the US had conceded since 2003. Sam, what did you see through your astonished eyes when this happened? I mean, when this happened to you as a player, 
when you concede early. Are you like, oh. shock news, we're 1-0 down, good news, we've got to wish the whole game to play to get it back? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a shock when those things happen. <laughs> oh like, God. you literally plan to start the game off in the opposite way. Like, let's come out flying the first 10 minutes and score a goal early. So going into a hole that early, 30 seconds in, it almost, like, is a little bit of a nightmare. Like, oh, geez, we just made our job so much harder. I feel like most players hadn't even touched the ball yet. I know it was bouncing around a lot and a few <laughs> people got a toe on it or whatever. But to just, like... You, you're not even aware tactically what's happening. I think to us, as the game went on, it, it became obvious that Japan was looking for that quick counterattack ball over the top, which again, they didn't have that many opportunities to do. We really gained control of the game after this goal. But in that moment, you haven't learned anything yet. So you're almost like, where did we even mess up? Like it just happened in a snap. And so I, I do think in some ways it almost guaranteed us a response from this U.S. team. This game could have been cagey. It could have been a lot of possession, a lot of passing around the back. But we couldn't afford to do that today because we got scored on so early. So, so it's it clever. That was the plan. That was the twi- That's what exactly. you're saying. It was yeah. the twilight's plan. I've got to say, the thing that did annoy me about the goal was it's kind of what Japan do. I mean, it wasn't. It was shocking because it was 30 seconds. Yeah. But... It wasn't like shocking that Japan tried to do this. It is kind of what Japan do. Um, uh, and yeah, it, that's uh, fair. God bless. Um, but in moments like that, um, you do have to ask yourself, how will a team respond to adversity, to that punch in the face? Yeah. Um, and what did you see? Because, you know, to me, the United States seemed undeterred, unbothered. Uh, there's a chance almost immediately Trinity Rodman couldn't keep down then. Really an exquisite dance from the quite electric Mallory Swanson through two or three defenders. That goal seemed oh, utterly inevitable, but a brilliant clearance of the ball by Mariah. And Sam, when we talked about the game, your first half slice of magic to me, you said it's what Mal adds to the attack. Um, as I said, I loved how just unfazed, how utterly focused, just how dedicated she seems to be to hurting her opponent, not thinking about herself at all. Can you put into words what you saw that Mal Swanson, a fit Mal Swanson, added the dimension she added to this U.S. women's national team? Yeah, Mal was like definitely a constant bright spot down that left wing. I do think that our response to getting scored on was to press high. I don't know if that would have been the game plan all along anyway, but we kept winning the ball back high up the field, and that gave players like Mal, and especially Mal today, that opportunity to almost like be in a position right when we win it to score. Like you're, it happens so fast. We're only 30 yards from goal. We win the ball back. Um, Mal in particular was finding her own space. She's dribbling. Like you said, that, that shot, she almost scored that got cleared off the line. She's dribbling defenders in the box. She's finding space down the left wing and crossing, picking out players. She overall just made such a huge difference today. I, I, I know how much we missed her at the world cup, but having her back i'm like oh my god like she's the answer like we missed her so much she was turning centrally in the pocket making runs in behind she can isolate herself 1v1 wide like she's so versatile she's great in small spaces she's fast i she looks how she looked before she got injured when she was the best player on the team in the prime of her career i can't believe how well she did today in her first game back and I, I'm so excited that we have her back. It's like so good for this team. You do. I mean, you can't be hypothetical about history, but this team plus Cap Macario, uh, plus Mal Pugh, dot, 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 at the World Cup. Um, there was a moment of agony. Uh, we have to acknowledge Naomi Gurma limping off. Hard to watch. Uh, US soccer later said she was being evaluated for a right thigh injury. Uh, my heart goes out to Naomi, who... I just think the world of she is she is to me the real leader uh, of this team on the field from the back right now. Um, and I've got to say, Sam, is it too much to ask for an elite women's game to be played without having to watch another serious semi injury? Is it that they're being overplayed? Too many tournaments being created, not enough time for recovery. Is it the temporary grass? I'm old enough to remember watching the, the Canada-US game played out on that flooded field. Oh. You actually found that agonizing. You found that like there was, there was nothing funny about that for you at all. You just watched in trepidation that somebody else would tear something. I know. I know. I, I obviously, and I know you agree, Raj, we, I don't want to speculate on Naomi in particular. I'm, everybody in the US right now is praying that she's okay, hoping that she's okay, sending her good vibes. So hopefully Naomi was just a precaution 
But I do feel so protective of these players and their health and safety. I think you can't help but get this sense of dread. Like there have been so many serious injuries happening lately. We just lost Midge Purse to an ACL. And not only do these injuries leave a, a hole in the team sheet, but it hurts these players as human beings. This is their livelihood. This is their life. This is their body. I, again, I, I don't want to harp on this as if Naomi is a serious injury because I really just hope that it was totally a precaution, but definitely one that we are going to be holding our breath about until we hear good news from the camp. I'm going to say quickly, the women's game is booming, which is magic, but there is a downside uh, that needs to be thought through. Uh, this uptick in new tournaments, you know, the W Gold Cup just shoved up against the beginning of the club season, the extended club season itself. As the game grows commercially, there is going to be more and more football um, and the science uh, has to keep up with that because when you speak to these players, they will tell you their bodies are not used to this wear and tear um, without recovery. A number of the players I've spoken to are so bloody shell-shocked. Yeah, uh, I, th I think that's spot on, Raj. I think that what we are seeing is that the players who are playing the most minutes, the most minutes in club and the most minutes internationally traveling back and forth, those are the players that we're seeing getting injured. And to me, that does signal that the resources aren't keeping up with the increased calendar. We talk about this week after week, it seems every time that another injury happens, but we want to see an increase in these resources as the game load and the match calendar continues to grow. The resources, the science, the understanding, yeah. the load management, the the, uh, the downtime, the recovery time. Um, I mean, it's a conversation we'd like to talk more and di dive into ourselves. But yeah. um, so more to come. But this team is tenacious. I've got to say, when the goal came, this one cut both for wonder and relief, coffee. Oh, Sam Coffey driving through the gut, feeding Jaden Shaw, who just rifled to her record fifth goal in her first five starts. <laughs> Sam, Jaden is 19 years and 138 days old. She's playing alongside truly accomplished stars, Alex Morgan, Lindsay Horan. Um, but it's her in these last five games that is scoring the big goals in the big moments for her team. What do you see when you watch her play tactically and mentally? Yeah, I mean, I I don't see like a rookie. Like, I think Jaden is crushing it. Like scoring from here, from distance, in a moment where the team is down a hole, down a goal. That's not like rookie behavior. Five goals and five starts <laughs> is not rookie behavior. Tactically, she seems like she's making smart movements. Like, I think especially on this goal, we're going to talk about it more in a minute. Being in the right place at the right time, she can score in multiple ways. We've seen her score with her head. We've seen her score from distance. And you're so right to point out specifically that She's coming up in big moments like this, this idea of that. I keep harping on that. We need balance between veterans and then young players like these young. It's not to say that these young players aren't going to step up in the big moments. Jaden keeps proving that I do feel like this 10 position is so interesting for her. Um, I know she plays more of the 10 with San Diego, but we've seen her out wide a little bit with the national team. I feel like she's very different from Rose Lavelle. Rose Lavelle is that like crafty, um, like quick slot, kind of like slithering through players, like being like really magical. And I kind of feel like Jaden is like a power 10. Like I like love just seeing her make these really strong moves from this position. So she's definitely bringing her own flair to this spot. Um, heading ability. Like I think she's super interesting in the 10, but like you said, scoring these goals in these big moments is a sign of a, a player who has so much in her wheelhouse. Um, can we talk about Sam Coffey in that goal too? Um, yeah. Oh, viewers here on YouTube voted a player of the game, um, which is a great, great... Um, I mean, it's almost as big as winning the women's game trophy as it's now called herself. She's the pride of <laughs> Master's School in Dobbs Ferry, New York. Um, I mean, she was really a clenched fist through that game in that midfield yeah. in the early exchanges. This Japan team coiled to counter constantly. And outside the first 30 seconds... They were really unable to build out in that singular style, which is frankly impressive. Um, they were driven back by the United States high press with Coffey really at the heart of it. Uh, yeah. And also the quality of the attacking players ahead of her. But uh, Sam Ewis, Sam Coffey, what do you see? <laughs> uh, besides her name being Sam, which I love, uh, the press on the goal, it, the press was so good today. Like I think especially in the first half, I mentioned this earlier, when you can win the ball back that close to the opposition's goal, all you all it needs is one pass and a shot. And 
it just leaves less room for error. Like when you have to build up all the way from your own goalkeeper, anybody could make a mistake in the buildup. There's so many more things that could go wrong, missed connections. But when Sam Coffey steps up, wins the ball back, she recognizes that opportunity that the ball is loose or she has this chance to win it off, off a Japanese player. Then she wins it back. And not only does she win it back and complete her next pass, but that next pass sets Jaden up for a goal. Um, there, Sam and Jaden are on the same page. Sam wins it, slots it centrally. Jaden is set up perfectly for a, such a great finish from distance. And I did notice too, like the awareness of Sam Coffey to know that that kind of, I would call it the weak side pocket. I know that's like very inside baseball term. On a quick turnover, Japan is like, collapsing around the ball when they lose it and where they lose it, trying to get numbers around the ball to win it back right there. So what opens up naturally is almost outside of that collapsed group of Japanese players on the other side where the 10 is occupied. Jaden being there and Sam knowing to slot it inside to her, that chance we've talked about with Mal, the same space was open where Alex Morgan had the ball, she slotted it across the field to the weak side pocket where Lindsay Horan had run into, who finds Mal, who almost finishes that chance that got cleared off the line. The awareness of the U.S. players to counterattack into that weak side space was so smart, especially from Sam Coffey in this play. This goal was such a pivotal moment in the game, and it was largely reflective of how successful our press was, especially against Japan, who should be probably better equipped to play out of pressure. So Sam Coffey on this goal was huge. Oh, weak side pocket sounds like a great Led Zeppelin tribute band. Um, but I got, I mean, listening to you describe that, it makes me adore her performance even more. I thought she was ferocious um, today. And, and again, everyone is trying to throw their hat um, both into uh, a starting place for the final of this tournament, but they're all thinking more long-term. Um, as we discussed. So can you answer this slightly weird question? Big elephant in the room of this game. It is the Olympics, the Olympic roster. And we know yeah. only 18 places available for Paris. You've lived out that stress, that nagging pressure. Does it impact you as a player, even in game, as you're like, miss hit a pass? And you're like, oh my Lord, Paris is slipping further <laughs> away. As you make a great tackle, you're like, hello, Eiffel Tower. Um, or is it, are you reevaluating on the field in real time or does it not work like that? Well, for me, I think especially when I was younger, I was always thinking about how precarious my place on the team was. Like it was never far from my mind. Even when I was like home grocery shopping, I was like, I got to do it for the Olympics. Like everything I did, it was constantly there on my mind, that urgency to perform. So I knew when I missed a pass, the margin for error to make that roster really was so small, not just in any given game, but overall for your place on the team. I do think that for a lot of these players, as you get older in your career, more experienced, you can create some distance from that where you recognize that it's not just one play that will make or break your spot on the Olympic roster, but you need confidence to get there. Confidence is what allows you to forget mistakes quickly, not doubt yourself. As a young player, I personally really, really struggled with that. And there was this constant feeling that I was on the verge of getting cut, but the confidence <laughs> in the play that I'm seeing from a lot of these players out there is, is what I like to see. Like I, my hope is that a lot of these players feel calm and feel composed on the ball and feel like they can let go of their mistakes without kind of being in this crippling agony of, oh my God, I'm going to lose my spot at the Olympics. Yeah, in the in the chat, Sad Dinger says she loves that Jenna Knight swung her, shook off that early goal and continued yeah. to focus on being dangerous, uh, which is the kind of mentality that you want to show. Second half, uh, more of the same pace and organization of the United States press hemming Japan back. Uh, it's really a half of chances made, chances not taken. Sophia Smith came on 60th minute with Sonnet and Casey Kruger. The best chance, I think Lindsay Horan uh, bullied away onto yeah. the ball, lash so sweet but not true, just the wrong side of the post. Uh, she will be bloody seething at herself for that one. Um, Sophia Smith um, slipped to Mal Pugh when she was actually through on goal um, but this was low block city, United States. They had all the ball, Sam. They just could not summon that finish. Yeah, I know the, the start of the second half was a little bit more measured than the first half. I thought the, the, we created a lot of chances. The final shot statistic was 18 to six. The U S had 18 shots, seven on target. 
I thought the second half when Soph Smith came on, she was creating, she was creating a lot of turnovers um, on the dribble a lot. Mal and Lindsay, both Mal Swanson and Lindsay Horan, both created some chances, had some Lindsay's great shot. Um, we just continued to push, even though a little bit of the momentum seemed to deflate, especially at the beginning there. Um, yeah. 75th minute, Sophia Smith turned, yep. split defenders in a way she lives and loves to do, brought down on the cusp of the box. Yeah. Um, penalty, important moment for the team, but really an important moment for her too, to come on and make an impact in this game, Sam. Yeah, exactly. I think that Soph will be unhappy to not have started. Um, so to sub on and really change the game, um, she was playing out wide, which I really liked from her today. We know that in the past she's been playing the nine a lot for Portland Thorns. She plays centrally plays the nine a lot. So I really liked her out wide and I think her ability today to create turnovers and then turn them really quickly into counterattack opportunities. So if herself was getting stuck into tackles, winning the ball and dribbling, mm -hmm. which is so like dynamic, so dangerous. It shows that she's good on both sides of the ball. She did, like you mentioned, she had that one that she laid off to Mal in the box instead of shooting. And you and I were maybe like, is that, is she doubting herself? Should she have shot this? But I think showing when she drew the PK just a few minutes later, she decided to take on two defenders on the corner of the box. And that's confidence. Like, <laughs> That's not doubting herself at all. She said, I'm going to beat both of you. She ends up getting a clear foul, draws a PK. Soph Smith has that special ability to use her skill, strength, and speed. So her coming in, she impacted the game a lot, and she's asking questions now of like, I should be out here. Lindsay Horan stepped up to the spot. I do love watching Lindsay play football. She is the kind of player who lives football off the field so profoundly. She also feels moments of the game on it so truly, madly, deeply, which I always admire. Um, but when she stepped up to take the penalties, I, I admire even more because there has to be a lot of head clearing um, to be able to do what she can do uh, so clinically um, with that stutter um, and, the, and the finish into the corner. By the way, Sam won't uh, self-promote, so I will. If you want to hear Sophia Smith, if you want to hear uh, <laughs> from Lindsay Horan, if you want to hear from Trinity Rodman, um, you will find them all over this YouTube page in Sam's interviews with them, which I do love. They are the highlight of my week on, uh, on Friendlies. But you saw in that moment when that goal went in, Every outfield player raced towards Lindsay Horan for the hug. I mean, it felt in that yeah. moment, you felt joy, you felt relief. This team proving itself to itself with every step it takes. Um, you know, massive, massive moment. And then on came Kat Macario. Almost two years to the day she was lost to injury after just, uh, I think, 63 minutes back for Chelsea, is it? She scored about 87 goals in those 63 minutes for her. This must have felt bloody amazing for the U.S. fan base. It felt amazing, too. We've missed her that much. I know. I think that we were so excited about Kat when she first burst onto the scene for this U.S. women's national team. She's so technical and creative. She's she spent, I think, the first 12 years of her life growing up in Brazil. And she really does bring that kind of technical flair, like this beautiful smoothness on the ball that is just so fun to watch. I love her creativity. I feel like Kat is one who can set herself up. She can shoot from distance. She has just such great texture on her passes. We actually saw this little scoop pass that she played into Sophia Smith just in the couple of minutes that she was out there on the field. And I think she brings a special quality that might enable this team to play a few different styles. Um, that she's kind of the nine that you want to combine with, have her play back to goal, um, have players running in behind her. She's kind of like a nine ten, And so it just adds this element to this team that if Kat is back fully fit, if she's ready to go for the Olympics and, and start games and be the nine, I think that's a really interesting option. Oh, at the same time as Kat, we have to talk about this. Another substitute came on, Corbin Albert, days after her apology for sharing what should be described as just truly awful anti-LGBTQ plus posts across her personal social media accounts. You've talked about it on Good Vibes FC. Um, you know, since then, we've debated long and hard about whether she get a start today. I, I couldn't imagine for the life of me that happening because that would be that would almost be a tacit statement that it was OK and it's business as usual. Um, but I also thought that getting her on today, um, it does have a footballing dimension that you understand. Uh, but it also works optically 
uh, for US soccer. Um, you know, get get her on. We're up two one, and that will she play? Won't she play? Debate, which could be a, a really gnawing uh, piece of flapping skin for this team. They got it out of the way by throwing her on late in this game. Yeah, I mean, I think that to your point, like maybe U.S. Soccer is thinking that this will put a stamp on the situation she's played, um, maybe in the hopes that people will stop talking about it. But I do think that Twyla and U.S. Soccer and Emma's influence, they're making decisions to win games. I, I don't necessarily think that Corbin not starting was because of what happened. I, I think that Mal Swanson came in and was ready to go. Twyla said that she wanted to see Jaden in the 10. Um, I think that when players come back from injury, the lineup's going to change. I know Corbin had started five of six games at Gold Cup, but wanting to see Mal on the field, wanting to try Jaden in the 10, I think that's another plausible reason why Corbin didn't start. And then she did get subbed on when Sam Coffey got injured. So, I mean, I don't know Twyla's thoughts. I don't know what U.S. Soccer was thinking. I don't know what was planned ahead for, but um, maybe the hope is now that Corbin has played, that people will stop talking about it. I do think that what the players said when Alex and Lindsay came forward and said that um, the team standards were not met, uh, that there were internal discussions within the team. I hope that that means that Corbin will respond to this and learn and grow and um, not do things like this in the future, maybe grow to um, see the LGBTQ community as beautiful. And um, I don't know Corbin, so I can't speak much more to her response to this beyond the apology that everybody read. Um, but we will see how the story continues to unfold. I'm sure we'll talk more about that in the questions, which are coming up in one second. Come on in to the chat. Come and uh, ask us whatever you want. Uh, NikeSav21 says, want to see Lily uh, instead of Corbin. I've got to say, oh, Lily Johannes, play Lily Johannes. Let us see her in an American jersey. That, to me, uh, is one of the most fascinating stories of this She Believes squad, and I cannot wait to see her 16 years of age take the field. Um, I've got to ask you, who do you think of the players, maybe the ones we've not mentioned, uh, maybe ones we have reinforce their claim on an Olympic spot today. Uh, like that Knight Swanger Crystal Dunn battle, for instance. Yeah, that's a really interesting one. I think you and I were actually talking about this during the game, like um, the, that outside back position. I think Jenna Nicewanger played well today. She's so interesting because she seems like she's always in and around the box. Jenna Nicewanger could like score a goal at any moment. I do feel like Crystal just has so much experience. She brings so much to that position and Honestly, Crystal could be that dangerous going forward as well. I think she's been restrained a little bit in her positioning um, historically with this team. The other outside back position, Emily Fox, didn't get that much mention today. And you and I were wondering, Raj, is that just because she's just doing her job? <laughs> she's not no, like super noticed on offense or on defense because she's completing her passes. She's making her tackles. Um, I, I wonder, like... I, th I love Emily Fox. I think she's been doing so great for Arsenal. Those outside back positions are so interesting. But somebody else I wanted to mention today, Abby Dahlkemper subbed in when Naomi Gurma went down. Abby Dahlkemper did her job today as well. I think that we've been talking so much about that center back pairing. Today, it looked like Naomi and Tierna Davidson were the starters. Abby Dahlkemper is here. She has so much experience. She was away from the team for a while and she's back and she subbed on today and did her job. I think she has a lot to offer the position as well. That was that UCLA speaking. It was UCLA speaking. I freaking <laughs> love Abby Dahlkemper. She has so many tools. She really does. I think um, also being able to sub on when somebody gets injured unexpectedly and perform, that's like, that's, that's something that is just adding another check in a box for you that you can do that. You can perform in that way. Also this, of players who weren't there because of injury or, or who didn't start or on the bench, if the United States was fully fit, a big if. Mm -hmm. um, Sam, if you were the US manager, an even bigger if, um, <laughs> who, who would you be picking as starters come that first Olympic game in Paris? Yeah, I mean, Rose Lavelle, I am always starting Rose Lavelle. Um, she's number one in my heart. She's number one on my team sheet. I love Rose Lavelle. Um, I think that she brings a quality and a creativity and a dangerousness to this team. Um, you kind of hold your breath every time she gets the ball. So, um, I'm patiently waiting for her to be back a little bit impatiently. I'm really excited for her. Um, I think that she kind of always has my vote. I think Sophia Smith definitely made a case for herself today. She subbed on, she did really great. 
And then I do think it's going to be really interesting to see how this Kat Macario situation develops. Um, she does offer something different, something unique. And if she can continue to grow in her fitness and her availability for more and more minutes, um, there's not that much time to adjust to big changes in the lineup. Realistically, now there is only five games between now and the Olympics. We'll have this game Tuesday, two June games, two July games, and then it's the Olympics. So if we want to alter what we're doing, I think now is the time to see if how it works. Oh, Fit Cat is, uh, well, Fit Cat has to be a lockdown starter. Uh, I mean, Emma Hayes paid large amounts of money for her to come to Chelsea. She is starting her for the United States of that. Uh, there is no doubt. We're going to sum this up. We're about to take your questions. You incredible human beings, come and be uh, with me and Sam. Newcomers who've just arrived. Yes, Sam and I do know we're wearing the exact same outfit. Yes, it is a coincidence. <laughs> and yes, Sam did look stunning and incredible. And I look pretty terrible and I need to get off to the barbers. I didn't know how terrible I looked till I just saw myself in this box. <laughs> but, but Sam, with this win, you know, I, I thought this this really built beautifully on the gold cut. I thought it was far yeah. more coherent, powerful collectively than any of those performances. Uh, I thought to come back from 1-0 down to in itself, uh, a sign of the old US women's national team core value of tenacity, unshakable belief, will to win. It was incredible to see glimmers of that uh, coming back in this team where, where we've seen self-doubt um in 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 recent games it's been it was phenomenal to see that unshakable belief almost abby won back uh unshakable belief I'm, I'm thinking of games where she just ran around the field with a finger in the air constantly shouting one chance that's all we need one chance we'll oh, score i love and, that yeah i that, love that know, reference I, I, I felt shades <laughs> of that today but you have the last word before we dive uh into beautiful beautiful listener questions what did you make of it all uh, yeah apart from bring on tuesday night yeah, I know. I mean, I, I agree with you. I'm thrilled with the win. I think to, again, to go down so early and to respond and to get the win, I agree that it brings back like something I think we started building in Gold Cup in that game against Colombia when we had just lost to Mexico and we had to just find a way to win. But I also think building on, it wasn't just that. Today wasn't just mentality. We outplayed Japan. We outshot Japan. Um, we had way more chances. I think that our press looked really good. I think our defensive unit looked overall really solid, except for the first 30 seconds. Um, so I'm really proud of the team. I think this was such a great response. And I think that we thrive. We live for She Believes. We are just a She Believes Cup squad. Um I'm really excited to hear from our listeners. We have reached this part of the show where we get to hear from you all. So if you are joining us live here on YouTube, you can scan the QR code <laughs> in the top left of your screen or click the pinned comment in the chat. That's going to take you to a Zoom with our producer, J-Dubs, who can tell you everything you need to know. You are not going to appear on screen. For those of you who don't want to ask a question, just do us a favor. Give us a like. It helps so much more than you know. Make sure you are subscribed here to our YouTube channel, Women's Game MIB. Okay. Up first, we have Katie Carl. Katie, you can unmute yourself. Tell us your name, where you're from, and then hit us with your question. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, Katie from Monterey Park, California. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Hi. I'm so excited. Um, You're really here. I know. This is crazy. It's <laughs> wild. <laughs> We've been waiting for you, Katie Carl, double K. <laughs> yeah. No, this is great. Um, so my question is, the players seem to have more chemistry, more of a connection than they have in a while. How do you think this chemistry with this team today will impact what many thought was a solid, predictable Olympic roster coming out of the Gold Cup? especially with the positive addition of Mal and Kat today? Oh, I know. Well, I mean, I think there's still a lot of spots to fight for. I do think today something I was noticing with Jaden, Lindsay, and Sam Coffey was a, a good chemistry there in the midfield. Um, we talked a lot about this earlier, but that goal, like the the pressure, the winning the ball back, and then creating of immediate chances um, – I have never been certain of what the roster is going to be even after Gold Cup. And I do think that today, not surprised that Mal is now back and crushing it and like obviously going to go. Um, I have full to total faith in Mal for that. But um, I just think it's this is a sign that this team is more competitive than ever. 
Um, there are other players not even here. Lynn, Lynn Williams, Rose Lavelle. I'm sure there's others that I'm forgetting. Becky Sauerbrunn's not in this camp right now either. So there are players both in camp starting on the bench and then not even in camp that may be available to come back. I have no idea what the roster is going to be. Um, Rod, what do you think? Uh, first of all, I've got to salute Katie Carl. You are our first ever caller on the Women's Game YouTube page. Oh! And that is, honestly, I feel like opening a bottle of Olipop and just shaking it up everywhere, Sam. It is a beautiful moment. We are honored Katie? to have you. I'm quite moved by how many people in the chat are like, hi, Katie. It's like, it's like, every, it's like uh, cheers, the bar where everyone knows your name. Katie Carl, thank you for that. Look, I honestly think no one knows right now that he's speaking to players um, speaking to some established players, they don't know. Um, I mean, it's not just the, the 23 into the 18. Um, what's yeah. really, I guess, a 32 into an 18 if you add all of the, 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 the bodies that we hope will be fit. Um, it's also that the weird purgatory of, of Twyla into to Emma. Like, that's an unknown. None of us yeah. know how much of this. Is this Twyla? How much will Emma put her stamp, make decisions? Or is this, is Twyla really just executing uh, Emma's ways? What I do I can tell you is speaking to the players, uh, even some deeply established players, they have no idea um, who will be going to Paris. That's really the, the mindset of almost everybody I've spoken to. And then the other thing that I do admire um, and this is a point you make, Sam, all the time. You know, we need that balance of the experience yeah. and the youth. This is a team in complete transition. It's almost a transition to the transition. We're almost shedding not just the veterans, but there's almost a shedding of the wave, uh, some of the wave that, that, that came in to follow them in that last World Cup squad. What impresses me the most today um, is the unshakable belief of some of those young players. There's a, there's no, there used to be when a young player would join this squad, a period of trying to you know keep your head down, just fit in, you know, daunted by the uh, by the veterans. Um, I mean, you look at Jaden Shaw, her mentality. Um, it's just a different kind of young mentality. It's sheer confidence, self belief. Um, unafraid to make this her team in those moments. And that's what I find most exciting about this moment. Yeah, Katie, one other thing I wanted to mention about this is we uh, we touched on this briefly. Raj and I did a She Believes Cup preview podcast. And I talked a little bit one about like... Um, I wanted to mention about this is we... Uh, oh, um, sorry, I just heard myself back for a second. That was, that was lovely. Um, <laughs> we talked about like the math equation that people must be doing on the team. So when I was playing, I had this like little list, like you'd either do it in your notes app or on a little scrap of paper in your hotel room with the pad and the pencil by your hotel bed. And you'd write out defenders, <laughs> midfielders, forwards, and like, who were the shoe-ins? And then you'd list out like, Did you how really? many people- Did you put yes. their names down? Did you write your own depth chart? Yes, and then we'd have to rip up the sheet and throw and it away eat it. because- Would you eat it? Would you like finish it? And then screw in a little ball and eat it? So no we one wouldn't it. eat it, but like, you're so, it's so intense and you're so curious. Like there's only so many spots. And so you have to, Oh kind of constantly God. just guess who is making it at what position. And that's why this versatility piece makes this more confusing, but also is such an added layer to somebody's game. Like somebody like Jenna Nicewanger, for example, I always think about Emily Sonnet when I talk about this. If you can play two or three positions, you're so valuable on a small roster because somebody gets injured. We saw this with Julie Ertz in World Cups and Olympics for years. Somebody gets injured and you can switch positions and perform there. It's just so, so valuable. Um, yeah, we were joking about Alyssa there being like goalkeeper striker. Backup just, striker. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just, Katie, what an incredible question. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm like so thrilled that we could have you here. Come and be with us anytime, Double K. Can I ask you, Sophie? Uh, can I ask you, Sammy? The 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 um these team sheets. I've got to know a bit more. Did you ever show yours to anybody else? Would you like go away with Rose only and compare your, and contrast, yes, or was only, it just not done? Only your very closest friends would you do this with, like people you would trust with your life. And so you'd obviously have to be doing this too. You'd go. You'd start out and you'd like have them written down, but like not, then you'd put yourself in parentheses, like I'm a maybe. And then your friend would be like, shut up. Like, no, you're not like I'm a maybe. And then you would just kind of agree like, okay, let's say we both make it because <laughs> you're, you're making the sheet to like, make sure there's room for you. 
It's a big mind game, you guys. It's wild out there. It's I'm telling you. It's an enormous mind game. It honestly sounds like something from, oh, it sounds excruciating. It sounds like something from that Bo Burnham movie, Eighth Grade. Um, oh, can we take another call, Sam? Here yes, we can. We have Siobhan. Siobhan, can you unmute yourself? We know your name is Siobhan, but tell us where you're from and hit us with your question. Um, hi, you can probably guess I'm from Ireland with a name like Siobhan. Hi, um, Siobhan. Welcome to the show. Are you calling from Ireland, um, Ireland, Siobhan? Are you here in the United States? I'm calling from Ireland, Ireland. I'm looking at a dairy farm. I'm as Irish can be. <laughs> Siobhan, you <laughs> are our white, first caller baby. from outside the United States and also our first ever caller from a dairy farm. And I'm probably the first ever caller that's nursing a baby as I talk. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm doing it all. Wow. Congratulations, Siobhan. Can I just say, Siobhan, that you're calling from a dairy farm? I'm a big whole milk girl. Love what some whole milk. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> okay. What's your question, um, Siobhan? My question is, um, with Emma Hayes coming in, what kind of changes do you think you're going to see? We're going to see. And also what, um, like, how do you think she's going to be different from Vladko in terms of how she manages? Oh, wow. You know, that's a really great question. I have no personal experience with Emma Hayes. I've asked almost every friendlies guest that I've had on if they have any experience with Emma and what they think of her. I hear from, you can go back and listen to, to some of these interviews. Um, I hear that she is a really great manager, that she's honest, um, that she has like a very winning based mentality and also had a very long conversation with Megan Rapinoe about how she's kind of savvy in the media and that she might kind of take on a role um, of being kind of in the forefront of the media on behalf of the team. Um, I think I, I can't say exactly how she'll differ from Blackco. I think that in my experience with Blackco, we were really defensively oriented um, making sure that we were locked down in the back first before thinking about anything else, which I totally respect. I think from seeing some of Emma Hayes' teams, it feels more um, like full fields to me. I think she's like very focused on her midfields and combining moving forward and exploiting spaces. Um, I wish I had more experience with her to know, but I'm really excited to see how her kind of confidence and leadership comes in and impacts this team. Raj, what are your thoughts? Um I've got many questions for Siobhan, which I do want to get back to. <laughs> but um, I would say, knowing Chelsea quite well, um, you know, traditionally, uh, going back to the earliest days, the US women's national team was often, the players had a lot of power and a lot of say and a lot of impact on how the team was run. Uh, at times, you know, um, able to decide who was starting, able to kill coaches as a period uh, where they were able to... Um, you know, essentially undermine their... Emma Hayes is not that coach. Emma is Emma is a very powerful human being. Uh, Emma is tactically savvy, brilliant. Uh, Emma is uh, an incredible personnel manager. Emma's an incredible communicator. As you said, she's going to be the face of this team. We have not really had that. Um, somebody who was that powerful coming in. So, I mean, she will take on US soccer. She took on Chelsea. She built Chelsea from a nothing, an afterthought, uh, where the mm. players were washing their own jerseys. And she has built them into a true uh, state-of-the-art, cutting-edge club. It's needed huge investment from the Chelsea side. She's demanded all of that investment. Uh, and that's what's going to be fascinating to see, not just what she does on the field, what she builds program-wise off it, um, you know, Flacco is a lovely man. Uh, a very, I mean, it's, it's lovely. I think it's great to see him doing well with Kansas City um, early on in this new season. With the totally. Club team. Uh, I think she's. Uh, he was a. He was a, um, a. A a player coach, and that he kind of supported the players. She's going to be. She is going to be the real leader of this program, and it's going to be fascinating. I think it's exactly uh, what this program uh, needs if we are going to keep up. Uh, with England, with England already saying we need to make changes to keep up with Spain. So that hierarchy, that that kind of change is exactly what we need. But Siobhan, very quickly, can you tell us about your baby? Who who we who we, <laughs> who, we, who, we who we in the presence of? How old? Just tell us what's going on over there on the dairy farm in Ireland. Well, I'm after moving from nursing. I'm actually now changing his diaper, as you call it in America, and um, we call here his nappy. <laughs> 
and uh, his name is Casey, and he's three months old. Oh, oh. I wish him and you health, happiness, lifetime of joy, uh, watching football together. And thanks for bringing us into into your deepest family life on this dairy farm in Ireland. And come be with us anytime whenever we do these. It's magnificent. Really, football. Thank you so much. Football connecting us to the rest of the world, Sam. It's. Amazing. I know how beautiful. I'm just like imagining being in Ireland on a dairy farm right now, and I'm like, <laughs> maybe that's where I belong. Um, but I'm here. I'm so happy to be here on this live stream with you all, Alana. You are our next caller, Alana. Can you unmute yourself? Tell us where you're from. I hope it's another dairy farm in Ireland, and then hit us with your question. Sadly, it is not a dairy farm oh. in Ireland. Uh, uh but i actually i have one kind of more football question and one more fun question um the football one uh, i'm wondering your thoughts on uh why maybe they moved away from especially in her hometown uh start, starting sonnet uh in the midfield after all the success that uh they had doing that at the end of last year yeah, I think, remember that World Cup game against Sweden when Sonnet hadn't started all tournaments, she comes on and she plays and she plays great. And I know that the U.S. ended up losing that game and penalty kicks, but I think that that tactical change and that decision to give Sonnet that opportunity, kind of playing that double pivot six with Andy Sullivan in the midfield, I felt like that was everybody's moment of being like, okay, it's Sonnet, like, let's stick with Sonnet. And that's how I felt. I think that Sonnet brings so much to that position. I said this in my thoughts before the game. Um, I love that she got on the field today. I think that, again, seeing that her for those few minutes with Sam Coffey playing that double pivot six, Sonnet has a lot of experience. She brings like a feistiness to the game. I think that she has shown in the past couple of years that she has that ability to sub on, to complete her passes, to to play balls in behind when she needs to, to finish out games, to close games. She makes tackles. Um, I love Sonnet. She's like also one of my best friends. So I'm very, very pro Sonnet. Um, I do think there's a lot of great options in the midfield. I think that Sam Coffey had such a great game today. The combination of players in the midfield is one super competitive. There has to be a lot of chemistry there. I think today it was interesting to see the combination coffee, Lindsay Horan, Jaden. We're still missing Rose Lavelle, like we said. There are some other options on the bench. Um, I think Sonnet should continue to make her case. I keep mentioning her as versatile. So I think she's a super valuable roster spot for this Olympics. And I think that the sixth position, Coffee made a good case today, but maybe we'll see somebody make uh, continue to push for it, including Sonnet. Yes, I mean, Sonnet was the, the revelation of a, of a very dark World Cup. I mean, it was like watching Jim Carrey uh, move from becoming a comic actor to like unveiling the Truman Show. And you're like, holy crap, he's an <laughs> unbelievable actor. Like Sonnet has always been almost too many positions. And so she was never able to really define herself. Suddenly in our hour of need, I mean, there, there were major managers uh, all over the world who looked at Sonnet in that World Cup and were like, oh, my God. That is a side of this human being yeah. that could really soar to the highest levels. Um, so so uh, I, I am with you in every regard on Sonnet. And I really, she's a phenomenal human being. I hope she gets to ride again. Alana, where are you in the United States? Uh, I'm in Philly. And actually, I've submitted this other question a bunch of times to for the Instagram Lives. And Raj, you've, you've always asked it. And I think... Sam, you've actually answered it, but I'd be interested to hear if your your answer has changed. And Raj, what your answer is, which of the three uh, national team players you picked to back you up in a bar fight? Is that you? Sonnet? Is that you that asked that question, Alana? That's me. You're the best. That's me. Go on. Go on, Sammy. Do they have to be in there today? No. In any, the bar? Any, in the bar? Or in the team? Anytime. Okay. It's tough. Sonnet, Yes. My sister, Christy, for her blind ability to back up whoever she wants to back up, like there doesn't have to be any reason. And I might go Kelly O'Hara. I feel like maybe I'm missing somebody, but Kelly O'Hara, I think she's got your back in a bar fight. I We did mention this. Um, we mentioned somebody else recently, Raj. Who am I, who am I thinking on? Nair. 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 Nair would just calmly... Nails for breakfast with the brass knuckles. She, she calmly just bring out a nail gun and just point it at people and be like, yeah, are we fighting? Do you really want to fight? Do you really? She's like Vinnie Jones in a, in a, uh, in a Guy Ritchie movie 
when she's in a bar fight. And I just love her for it. We got to get Nair on friendlies. Um, I, she's on. She. Hey, I'm working we, on it. We got to get Nair. I she's mean, up, I have so she's many questions. Up. Um, Alana, it's Nair. We don't need three uh, with Nair. All I've got to say, Emma Hayes, <laughs> Emma Hayes coming over here. I would just, I'm not going to say any more, but Emma Hayes gets my recent vote, Alana. Um, I love that you asked that question. Can I ask you quickly? Because we've got a couple of other callers we yeah. want to get on with super, super quickly. What made you ask that question? Are you really just fascinated in that side of the US Women's National Team? Or are you just Alana <laughs> who just gets in bar fights and it had a practical application? It's it's absolutely that, hundred percent that. <laughs> oh man, Alana, thank you for calling in. That was the most fun question I think we're going to get today. We really appreciate the you most calling fun in. question. Not on an Irish dairy farm. Come be with us anytime, Alana. Oh, Alana, thank you so much. Thank Love you. that. Good luck in your next bar fight. Uh, we have another <laughs> caller, Sama. You're up next. Uh, we know your name. Can you tell us where you're from? Don't forget to unmute and ask us your question. Hi Sam, hi Raj. Uh, hi. I'm coming from Indonesia, very far away from you guys. Wow! Oh my gosh. This is yeah, really it's like the almost world's three... game. It's the world's game. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. So my question is: We saw um, Crystal Dunst being in not for nice warmer, but for Mal. So we saw both Jenna and Crystal playing at the same time. So what are the chances of yeah. seeing Crystal playing that midfield position? Yeah, I know. My thought, I'm not sure if I'm right on this. I thought Jenna looked like she moved up the field when Crystal came on. Um, what are what are what are the chances of seeing Crystal play in the midfield position? I would love to see Crystal in the midfield. I think Crystal is another one of these versatile players. Crystal could play outside back. She could play in the midfield. She could also play winger. Um, Crystal back in the day used to play the nine. She also has played center back in her day. She's a, a very well-rounded player who's tools and skills and vision allow her to play anywhere. I think that a couple of months ago, I would have said, put her in there, like makes total sense. And I think the way it's shaping up now, I, I don't know. The midfield is starting to feel, especially with Jaden Shaw coming in there. Um, it's starting to feel like they're looking at other options in there in the midfield. I wonder Emma Hayes first camp will be early June. Maybe Emma Hayes shows up and she's suddenly like crystal Dunn belongs in the midfield. That's, I think a potential change that we can look for. Um, I think Crystal is a shoe in for the Olympics roster. She could wind up playing anywhere, but I really do like to see um, opportunities for people to play how they're going to play in the Olympics. And the fact that we haven't really seen her there yet kind of signals to me that we might not this cycle. Um, Raj, do you think differently about that? You know, I want to save the time to get another call in. I'll just say that you mentioning Crystal, I want to go back to Alana. Crystal Dunn is another one in a bar fight. She will just dance uh, on everyone. She's an incredible, <laughs> that human being is a force of nature. Godspeed to her. Uh, but Jenna Nicewonga, what a dimension she does bring to this team. Um, I mean, these are, can I just say, these are fantastic times to be having these discussions because these yeah. options are so real, so deep, so truly uh, remarkable. I, I, God, the mood has changed so wonderfully uh, from just four or five months ago. And it's, uh, it's a magical time to be having these conversations. But Sammy, let's take a last call. Yeah, thank you so much for calling in, Salma. We really appreciate you. Denise, you're our last caller. Denise Nickerson, um, Unmute, tell us where you're from and ask us your question. Hi, Sam, can you hear me? Yes, hi. Okay, hi. You know what, I'm gonna just say real quickly, I am so impressed you actually got my name, last name correctly. Most people wanna throw an R in it. There's a lot of Nickersons in Boston, but uh, kudos <laughs> to you. Well, maybe it's because um, I'm from Boston that I didn't say the R. Maybe. Where are, you, where are you from, Quickly, Denise? Where are you calling from? I'm from I'm from the non-exotic Central California, where we do have dairy farms, but alas, I don't live on one. But <laughs> like I'm, Fresno yeah, area, the, um, yeah, just north, uh, just south of Fresno, Visalia. Oh, so, okay, cool. Um, you know, you know my best friend and partner in crime, Lynn Williams, is from Fresno. I know. I love it. I love the <laughs> California girl. Yeah. Um, okay. What's your question, rep Denise? Represented. Okay, yeah. Two, que two questions quickly. Um, at, towards the end of the game, the U.S. went into a five back line, five players on the back line. Forgive me, I'm not a soccer nerd, but 
Julie Fouty commented a couple of different times where she thought that they were getting too low. Yeah. And they were allowing Japan to get really close to the box. Did you notice that? What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that was a, not a good tactical move on, on our part? And then well, a second quick question. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll answer the first question first, Denise. Thank you so much. I think yeah. that a tendency when you're up a goal is to maybe sub on an additional defensive player and kind of sure up the defense. Like, uh, it's very common to see teams go into a five back when you're up a goal. I don't think it's a tactical mistake. I think that the execution of it can be done where maybe you're a little bit too passive. Maybe you're a little bit too conservative and you do allow the other team to just kind of come down your throat with waves of attack. I don't know if that necessarily was happening today, but it certainly has the capability of happening in general with a five back. Um, I think not to get too technical, but in a five pack, a five back, it is really important to step your line when you clear the ball um, so that you can get your numbers back higher up the field and not just receive wave after wave of attack from the other team. I think this is something that we should work on. Like moving into an Olympics, you often go through all different kinds of situations. How do you change tactically when you're up a goal? How do you change tactically when you're down a goal, when you're tied, when you're an extra time, if you're up a player, down a player, you go through all these iterations. We are three months out from the Olympics. And maybe this is something we can work on between now and then exactly how to execute the end of the game when you're up a goal. Um, Raj, do you agree? I'm just going to say weak side pocket. And, weak side uh, pocket. Yeah, just say weak side <laughs> pocket. And, and just ask you, Denise, what, what's your second question? <laughs> okay, so quickly, of the many uh, football pods that I listen to, including yours, Sam, big fan, um, a couple of, a lot of these pundits have said that Lily Johannes reminds them of you oh. in being a box-to-box -box midfielder. Have you watched her, seen her enough to agree, disagree? What are your thoughts on Lily? I, I haven't seen her. I'm looking forward to it. I hope we see her next game. Yeah, I haven't seen her enough. I'm so flattered that people think that. Like I, anytime somebody's like bringing me back into the game, like I'll take it. I'm thrilled. I have heard such amazing things about Lily to think that she is this young. She's art. She's 16 years old. She's already starting Champions League games. She's playing in the Netherlands for Ajax right now. Um, I've seen her play just for a few minutes here and there. I imagine that she is going to only continue to grow and thrive, which I'm so excited to see. And hopefully we do get to see her play some minutes on Tuesday. Um, if I see myself in her at all, Denise, I will be sure to uh, let everybody know that on an, another episode of a podcast and I will shout you out. Um, but I'm sure that Lily is also has her own flair and her own game, which will soon, I hope, grace the U.S. Women's National Team. I know here at Men and Blazers, we're all very, very excited for Lily as one of our hopeful future stars of this U.S. team. Um, Denise, thank you so much for calling in with those questions. That was so nice to hear from you. Thanks, guys. Love you both. Thank you, Denise. That's <laughs> such a, a lo lovely note to end on, Sam. That is deeply meaningful. I mean, you are um, such a deeply, just a point of reference for so many people and so many players uh, within this game. To me, that's ultimately the most incredible legacy that the great players who are coming through are being linked to whom they're being linked to you. Your presence is still felt so deeply uh, across this team. Uh, and I just say Lily, I think, is a very special footballer. It's very hard to put so much pressure, so much excitement, yeah. and so much expectation on someone still so young, so raw. Uh, but I do know, you know, uh, I've, I've connected with her father, Dan. Uh, she comes from a really spectacular family, her two brothers, both pursuing their own football journeys. Hers has been meticulous. I know there was some movement towards the Dutch national team, mm. uh, her moving through Ajax, learning that Dutch game, that Dutch mentality. I am so unbelievably thrilled uh, that she's going to ride with us, and I can't wait to see her early steps without that weight of expectation, please God, and, and, and may she soar. But Sam, to have her compared to you, what a beautiful <laughs> way to end this. Our first Do It Live on the Women's Game YouTube page. Together. I know, this has been so much fun. I have really loved doing this with you, Raj. So thank you so much for being here with us. We are wrapping up this Do It Live. The U.S. Women's National Team just won their first She Believes Cup game, and now they are going to play again on Tuesday. 
first of all, thank you all so much for calling in with your questions. It was so much fun to hear from you all. And thank you to everybody who's been in the chat, for everybody who tuned into this live on YouTube. We are going to be back with another Do It Live on Tuesday night following. Do, do we have to wear the same clothes, Sammy, again? I, are we I different think outfits, same outfits? We'll have to link outfits. up. We're going to have to link up. I'm thinking maybe it's like neon theme, but like I'll text you on Tuesday. Um, the U.S. Women's National Team will play either Canada or Brazil on Tuesday in the She Believes Cup final at 7 p.m. Eastern time. The Do It Live will start here again on YouTube moments after the final whistle. So make sure that you're subscribed to the Women's Game YouTube channel. That's Women's Game MIB. You won't miss anything as long as you're subscribed there. All of our podcasts are available on there. You can see our cute little faces as we chat with all of our friends. Um, another news flash, though, our schedule is going to be a little bit different next week due to this She Believes Cup tournament. We have a friendlies episode. Surprise. It's coming at you on Monday with Michelle Alozia of the Nigerian national team and the Houston Dash. Then the U.S. Women's National Team plays Tuesday. We have our Do It Live on Tuesday. Then Good Vibes FC is coming at you on Thursday with Becky Crazy. Sauerbrunn. Crazy. I know. It's all mixed up. A solar eclipse week means things get just a little bit shifted around. Good Vibes will come out on Thursday instead of Tuesday with a full breakdown of the She Believes tournament, as well as updates from around the world, including the Euro qualifiers, which are going on, the AFCON Olympic qualifiers, which are going on to decide those last two teams who will be going to the Olympics from the Africa uh, region. There's so much in store next week. Please follow along with us across all of our socials, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Women's Game MIB. Raj, thank you so much for joining me here today. It is the greatest joy, Sam. You are bringing so much love, so much great vibes to the world when we all need them. Ah, thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you were here. The U.S. did great. <sighs> Everything is good. I'm Sam Lewis. We're all, this is... we're all moving to an Irish dairy farm. We're all moving to an Irish dairy farm. It's amazing. I'm Sam Lewis. This is the women's game. Thank you all so much for being here with us. We'll see you soon.